All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to this NTOP Live. Um, today, uh, I'm going to be talking about using math equations and algorithms in your uh, NTOP uh, platform workflows and, and notebooks and uh, from simple uh, algebraic equations to uh, more complex logical operations and algorithms. Um, and the motivation here uh, is on top, every, every update is looking more and more uh, like a programming language in, in a way, or maybe something closer to Excel, um, but for, for CAD software. So, so um, everybody at their company either knows someone or is someone that is kind of the Excel uh, wizard uh, that, that can create these kind of macros and, and speed up productivity and, and enhance capabilities by um, including things like log logical operators, like if statements and um, uh, um, filtering and sorting and, and all of their data and automatically updating uh, code. So um, I'm going to share my screen and we'll get into a couple examples. And we'll start off with just uh, an overview of what it looks like to take a math equation and uh, put it into um, put it into a top notebook. Um, and so going back to very, very elementary uh, algebra, you may remember PEMDAS, which is kind of the order of operations for an equation. And uh, this is a good way to break down how you want to convert a math equation into an top notebook. And the way to think is the First operations should be on the inside blocks if you have kind of nested math, math blocks. And the, the final operations, the things at the end of the spectrum of PEMDAS uh, belong in the um, outside blocks. So, so you start in and go out with, as with any end top block. And um, in this example, very simple math equation, we're, we're doing some uh, multiplication and subtraction and um, we're going to start with the, what's on the inside. Uh, so 18, you know, if you were going to do this by hand, you would start here within the parentheses. So, so we have that on the inside block here. And we have the 18 by 6. We have the multiply by 15. And then um, we move outwards towards, uh, and then we would next do the operation on this side, the 14 divided by 7. So that's on this inside block. And then we uh, subtract the two, right? And we get the right result. And I know this looks kind of trivial, uh, but this is a good reference for someone that's looking at a math equation and, and needing to convert it into um, NTOP. Uh, so, so you can use this as like a template to, to help understand. Um, but we can get into more complicated algorithms. Uh, and so this, uh, this is a series of math equations and um, also conditionals like uh, if statements and if else uh, st statements and, and nested statements that um, uses uh, is used to uh, convert a rotation matrix into something called Euler angles. And we don't really need to um, get into the specifics of, of that operation, although attached in the files for this in top notebook is a, a paper on this uh, or a, just a PDF. Um, by uh, Gregory Slabau, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. And um, a rotation matrix is used to apply a rotation to any 3D object or point or line. So, so if you have um, an object, you can say, I will always rotate about the X, Y, and Z axis by some number and get to another position uh, based on the values within this rotation matrix. And uh, you could do some, some matrix math to, to compute that uh, and, and, and get the result. Or you can convert it to something called Euler angles, which will um, give you uh, three angles, um, which rotate the object by the x, the y, and the z axes in that order. Um, and like I said, we don't need to get into too much specifics here. I just thought this was a good example of pseudocode of um, an operation where we get some, some series of results and they're based on, you know, kind of conditionals. So 
if R31, which is the uh, rotation matrix value at 3, 1, um, if that's not equal to 1, you do some things and then uh, you know, it, it goes on from there. And so I will pull up the uh, NTOP version of this notebook and we can go through and look at it. So the first step is to import um, a CSV file that has the rotation matrix. So I have that here and I'm using a simple identity matrix in this case. So we'll end up with um, no rotation at all because it's just um, not doing anything. But you could put any rotation matrix in here, uh, choose the file and it'll spit out the correct Euler angles. Uh, but the, the important concept here is just that I'm taking in a matrix and based on the values, I'm gonna do some, some if statements and some math operations to get some output. And this is all outlined in this pseudocode. Um, so I've, I've chosen this file, which we'll bring in uh, using the import points block. Um, it'll bring in the data. And so we can see the uh, matrix has been brought in as a list of vectors. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, just like our CSV file said. And now we can begin going through um, all of this uh, pseudocode and generating it at NTOP. So uh, just to uh, make things a little more clear as we're doing the math here, I'm separating this uh, vector list into individual rows. So you can see this is the first row uh, and I made this a variable. So R1 is the first row of R and second row of R and third row of R. And if we look at the first value in this, that's, um, I'm sorry, yeah, this should be down here. If we look at the first value in the third row, that's um, pulled as its own variable as well. And that's because we end up using this R31 uh, quite a bit. But it's the same thing as just saying the, the first value in this vector. Uh, so let me see if I can scroll down. Yeah, so there you can see it's the first value in this R row three vector. Um, so we have our R R1, R2, and R3 rows. Uh, and now we're going to do some math operations. So if you look at the pseudocode, basically you have three cases. You have the first case if R31 is not equal to uh, plus or minus one. And then you have another case where if it's equal to negative one and then another case where it's equal to one. Um, and so we're just gonna do all these calculations for the different cases. And we'll call this first set of cases where these calculations are here, uh, we'll call that case A. And then this case where we have R31 equal to negative one, we'll call that case B. And the else statement, which is basically referring to uh, this equal to one um, because it already is in this this uh, if statement of um, being equal to one or negative one and we've ruled out negative one. So this is R31 equal to one, uh, that's case C. And then we can go through and start doing these calculations. And so uh, I'll zoom in here on, I'm having trouble with that actually, there we go, there we go. Uh, and the way this algorithm works, you can read about the, the um, paper in the paper here if you're interested, but it gives us two options because there are kind of two results that would give us the uh, same answer, uh, just kind of due to the repeated nature of, of uh, rotation. And um, we can ignore that for, uh, oh, that's only happening in case one, by the way. Uh, but we can ignore that. So that's the theta two, psi two, and phi two. So I'm gonna cross those out and we can just ignore those. And so let's look at case A. That's where this is e not equal to one or negative one. And uh, we're just gonna do these calculations first and then we'll worry about the conditionals. So you can see I, um, for case A, I'm setting uh, theta A, so this guy uh, is the arc sine times negative one of uh, R31. 
So R31 is, is uh, designated by this. Uh, you could also drag this variable in, same thing. And uh, we can look at psi now. So psi is the arctan. You see that's on the outside. And then in the inside with the parentheses, we have um, R3y, which is the same thing as R32, divided by cosine of theta a. And uh, the other term in this arctan is the uh, R33, so R3z, uh, divided by cosine of theta a. And uh, if you're not familiar with this a tan 2 function, it's just a common numerical function to uh, take the arctangent of something while, while uh, making sure you get the right sign of, of uh, plus or minus in the result. Um, so you can research more about that. It's, it's in Python and, and C++. It's called ATAN2 or MATLAB as well. So uh, we just continue on with this same process. Uh, this is similar. ATAN2, uh, R2, uh, 1 divided by cosine of theta A and so on. And uh, we end up with our three uh, results, psi, theta, and phi. Uh, and they are um, in a vector, put back together in a vector. So we'll say this is the result if you have case A. And then we have case B. Uh, so that would be everything in this region. And you'll see it says uh, for either of these cases, C, B or C, um, phi could be related uh, to, or can be set to zero uh, or anything. But we're going to go with zero for both of these. So that's why we have these. And then we calculate theta, which is just pi over two, and psi, oops, which is uh, psi is just the um, phi plus a tan two of uh, r, r1, 2 and r13. So it may be better if you just go through this uh, yourself, but uh, you can you have this code um, it should be linked at the bottom, and you'll have this PDF. So um, all that's available to you. And um, now we have case B to find, and case C. We're going to skip that, but it's just very similar equations. And now we get to the interesting part, which is the conditionals. And so if you look at the way this code is set up, it's kind of a nested if statement. Uh, you have an if else, and then within the else you have another if statement. So we're going to set that up the same way. Um, this is the first if statement on the outside. And the way this if block works, I'll, I'll make a new one and you can see. So you can import this. It's a uh, custom block in the um, folder that you should get from this uh, download uh, linked below. And if you go to File, Import, and select um, Let's find this in top live. If you select this block and then select open after doing file import, uh, you can create a list of anything. So let's do a vector list. And that vector list needs to have two items in it, only two. And you'll see, oops, I'll make this one or 10, 10, 10. And if I toggle this on, it will be uh, the first value here, 10, 10, 10. And if I toggle this off, it'll be 0, 0, 0. And I can make this toggle not just something clickable, but also um, a bool, which means a true or false variable. So under our math blocks, we have uh, logic operations. And we can do uh, all these bool results, which is very useful and and not only you know greater than less than equals but also and and or statements so in this case i have a choice between case a and case b or c so we'll get to the case b or c later uh, that's inside this if statement but for the conditional i have uh, not equal to one and not equal to negative one and uh, an and the, these bools are placed into a uh, and statement. So that means that both of these have to be true in order to select case A. And otherwise, we're going to select case B. 
because this is first in the list and this is second and here's our conditional. So just like we had with our vector list below. And now uh, let's say we're gonna go to this um, choice in the vector list. We can go down to, see if I can see this a little better. We can go down to the um, second if statement, which uh, relates to the if statement in here. You have case B or C, uh, and that is gonna be um, based on whether you're true or not to equaling negative one. So you can see that's false, so it's gonna go to case C. And all the calculations we've made will follow the, uh, oops, follow the, algorithm here based on these setup. So maybe you don't need to actually use this exact algorithm, but the hope is that you can take this uh, result or, or take the, these files, I should say, and uh, be able to make your own algorithms and uh, generate um, features yourself. Uh, so, you know, we, we update very quickly. We have 2.5 or every two weeks we have, we have, um, and top updates, but if there's a feature like like something that has logic that you don't think you can do, check. Maybe you can. Maybe you can do some kind of algorithm on your own. Um, you now, of course, we're happy to help, and uh, and we're always expanding features. But uh, if there's something niche that you think that um, you could create, then then I encourage you to try. And I was going to include this in this NTOP live session, but I think it's it's a little too complicated to to show. Um, all, all in one end top live. So I think I'm gonna do another session on it, but uh, you can build kind of smart manufacturing tools with stuff like this. So so if I start building logic into my end top notebook, um, I can demonstrate how, uh, I let's say I have a part inventory and it's either in the cloud or on an Excel sheet. Uh, and it has, you know, my part IDs and their price and their, uh, how many is left. And I can go in and say, okay, I need to do a build and I can look automatically at the inventory and say, um, this is how much I have left. So I'm going to make this many based on the material cost and the uh, sale price. Uh, all these things can be built in so that, you know, you, you can take the thinking out of, out of this and, and the everyday life and just, just have these tools kind of um, uh, auto, auto run for you. So, so um, this notebook, which I, again, I'll do an NTOP live later on, um, we can calculate the, the profit from doing a build based on how many you're going to build, automatically adds the support structures, and then automatically choose to either export the mesh when you're sending it to the printer and uh, choose to update the inventory. We'll actually uh, edit this file and, and you can just refresh this. And uh, after, after updating your inventory, you'll have a, a fresh Excel sheet that um, will follow all the work you've done in uh, in NTOP. Um, so again, uh, that's just a teaser for that. I think I'll do an NTOP live on it uh, in its own right. Um, and hopefully you've, you've kind of expanded your horizons a little bit thinking about what you can do with, with NTOP. Uh, and maybe if you, if you uh, want to try something, you have some ideas for a uh, logical operation you can put into NTOP. Um, give it a shot. You can always contact me at uh, Blake Johnson at entopology.com. So um, I think I have my, maybe I don't. So I'll, I'll put my email here and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out if you have questions uh, based on these files or based on something you're trying to do. And um, I think that's everything. So, so thank you for joining me and uh, I hope you have a great day and um, good luck.